Here we are again with another YouTube preacher who has had the courage to publicly address the teachings of Jesus about forsaking all. The guy's name is Mike Winger. He's an associate pastor of Hosanna Christian Fellowship in Bellflower, California. As a mere associate pastor, he's hardly mega church big name at this stage. But Mike has a YouTube channel with over a quarter of a million subscribers. And he can get hundreds of thousands of people to listen to him talk for an hour and a half or for two hours at a time. In other words, he's a really good speaker who will probably have his own mega church before long. One of his viewers sent me a clip where Mike spends five minutes discussing the concept of forsaking all with one of his admittedly rich followers. And it gives some good insight into how pastors usually deal with this whole issue of forsaking all when it comes up with one of their parishioners. They must deal with it in such a way as to keep their rich followers happy, even if it alienates, or maybe even because it alienates poorer people who might wander into their nice, respectable churches. So this guy from the congregation with his fairly quiet wife asks Mike a question. Jesus talking about giving, sell all your possessions, give them away. Like, what's your perspective on like us living in this house? Is this like, are we considered the rich? I mean, out of the world, I feel like, you know, we definitely are considered one of the richest percent percentiles. So then Mike replies, the Christian church involves the rich and the poor. That pretty much answers the question right there. On the surface, it sounds almost idyllic. Rich and poor people side by side, loving and respecting one another. But it doesn't work like that in the real world. What Mike is really saying between the lines is this. We absolutely love rich people here, brother. The more rich people, the better. James, the brother of Jesus, had this to say on the subject. Hasn't God chosen the poor of this world, who are rich in faith and who are heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him? But you have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which you are called? But maybe we are judging Mike too soon. All he said was that the Christian church involves both the poor, who are the rightful heirs of the kingdom of heaven, and the rich, who blaspheme the name by which we are called. We can all live together happily in Mike Winger's model of the Christian church. But to keep the rich couple on side, Mike Winger needs to dispense with this embarrassing encounter between Jesus and another rich man. He must bring it around to saying nothing against rich people at all. Watch as Mike does just that. So it's this like rich young ruler that we read about and Jesus tells him, sell all that you have and give it to the poor. Now some think, okay, so I should sell all I have and give it to the poor. Except Jesus didn't tell most people that. He just told this one guy that. Remember, Mike Winger is talking to a member of his congregation who has already acknowledged that he is rich by world standards. And Mike has just assured the man that there is plenty of room for rich people in his church. So he has got to rubbish what Jesus says in this encounter. Never mind that Jesus had already said about the rich and the poor in the sixth chapter of Luke, blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hmm, sounds a little like what James said, doesn't it? And he goes on, but woe unto you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. After the rich man left, Jesus was even more blunt in what he said to his disciples. He said, it would be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven. Pretty strong stuff. But hang in there and you'll see how Mike and preachers everywhere arrive at quite an opposite conclusion. You will see how he takes the perspective of the rich young ruler against what Jesus said. Mike is going to tell you that forsaking all is ridiculous. And we will see how it is easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than it is for Jesus to get into Mike Winger's idea of a Christian church. 
<laughs> Definitely mega church material, this guy. Mike starts with the very popular myth that... Jesus didn't tell most people that. He just told this one guy that. It's a lie, of course, but a very popular one. Still, if you want to know the truth, what Jesus said to the rich young ruler is repeated more often than almost any of his teachings. Not only is it repeated in the various Gospels, but it is said over and over in just this one Gospel. In Luke 11, Jesus tells the Pharisees that if they would give up everything they have to the poor, then everything would be clean to them. In Luke 12, he tells his disciples to sell all that they have and give alms to the poor. In Luke 14, he tells the entire multitude that no one can be his disciple unless they forsake everything they own. And, of course, in Luke 18, he tells this rich, young ruler to sell what he has and give the proceeds to the poor as well. But Mike Winger says, Jesus didn't tell most people that. He just told this one guy that. Hmm, why? Because that guy needed that. That, that guy needed that. This assumption that you can rip passages out of the Bible on the grounds that Jesus was talking inconsequential stuff to random unique individuals is quite a dangerous one. Imagine if we argued that Jesus' instruction to the woman caught in adultery to go and sin no more was just something that she needed, but that it would be dangerous to apply it to the whole church. Imagine if we said that Peter's claim that there is no salvation through anyone else except Jesus was just something that Annas and Caiaphas needed to hear, but that it is dangerous to extrapolate from that that such a teaching should apply to the whole church. Imagine if we said that Nicodemus had his own little kinky problem that caused Jesus to say that Nicodemus needed to be born again. Imagine if we said that it is dangerous to assume that the whole church needs to be born again. But that is what Mike teaches when it comes to obeying Jesus on this issue. Listen to it again. Jesus didn't tell most people that. He just told this one guy that. Hmm, why? Because that guy needed that. that. That guy needed that. Mike's wealthy benefactor is obviously relieved to hear this. He has just heard that Jesus did not mean for all rich people to heed what he said to this one rich young ruler. This guy was so random, so exceptional, that nobody, not even the richest man on earth, needs to take seriously what Jesus said to that one random guy. Listen as the rich guy from Mike's church stumbles a bit, trying to say it as smoothly as Mike did. In his heart, he knows that Mike has justified his greed, and he is swept away at how smoothly Mike did it. Gotcha. Yeah, I really like that answer. It seems like the more I personally study scripture, it seems like the more it, it's in, it's vital to, when Jesus was speaking to certain people, paying attention like who he was speaking to. Not necessarily it doesn't, not necessarily, that it doesn't necessarily apply to everybody, or that it does, uh, or that it doesn't, but it just seems like an important thing to remember. Like sometimes he's speaking to certain people. It's dangerous to take what Jesus says to any random person and just go do it. Well, of course the rich parishioner liked that answer. That was the whole point of the exercise. But let's give Mike more time to explain why he thinks the rich young ruler was an exception. Why? Because that guy needed that. That that guy needed that. And I would just kind of say like, yeah, if you need to do that, do that, you know, <laughs> that's or if you just want to go ahead and do that, but don't tell the whole church to do it because what's going to happen is we're going to be a super generous church for about two weeks and then we're all going to be out with our hands out, right? Because now we're all poor. Mike obviously does not want poor people in his church because poor people just stick their hands out. If obeying Jesus is likely to make you poor, then you simply do not teach it in Mike Winger's church. But here is what Jesus taught in the Sermon on the Mount. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Therefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is there today and cast into the oven tomorrow, shall he not much more clothe you? O you of little faith? 
It's there on every page of the Gospels. The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Jesus and his disciples were homeless, but they did not go hungry. The rich have never allowed themselves to be poor, and so they imagine that poverty is a curse. In their minds, there is no God big enough to provide for those who trust Him more than they trust money. And this is where it becomes clear that a poor person would be shunned right out of Mike's church. Listen. You're going to be on the street begging. Now multiply that by every Christian in your community. That is not a good look for the church. <laughs> like, you know. We Do you hear that? Poor people are not a good look for the church. You can't have poor people in the church of the rich young ruler, in Mike Winger's church. You can be sure that Mike, like so many other pastors around the world, would be quietly preaching that message over and over to the poor until they get the hint and leave the building. So now, let's get back to properly motivating the rich. And how then are we going to be generous and give if we don't have anything left because we've given everything away? Rich churches everywhere know how to play this card. You argue that the poor need rich people to take care of them. And then you refuse to help the poor because otherwise you would not be rich. In his own words, Mike asked, how can we have anything to give if we give it all away? <laughs> what strange logic. But Jesus taught what real wealth is all about. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these other material things will be added unto you. Mike waffled on in the usual attempt to locate exceptions to what Jesus clearly taught. I thought it was ironic that he praised a woman who made and sold purple cloth while a woman was sitting there in a purple dress. The woman Mike was referring to, named Lydia, had been selling cloth until she met Paul and then she heard the gospel for the first time. On hearing it, she gave her house to the church in that area and they all moved in. But Mike Winger's impression is that God wants us to get good paying jobs and buy houses. The bigger the better, so that the wealthiest Christians can hold Bible studies in their nice big living rooms one night a week. But they weren't just random homes. They were whatever person in the congregation had a big old house. Right? They gathered in the wealthy Christians' homes. And so, what I think we've got going on here is an example of a variety of wealth levels in the body of Christ and how we all just contribute in different ways. Of course, what really happened, according to the scripture, is that the richest Christians were the ones who sold their house and gave the proceeds from the sale to the church. In some cases, the house itself would be donated so that a few dozen people could crowd together in the one house. But Mike doesn't see it that way. He doesn't think it's possible to sell your house and just rent. He doesn't see any point in a bunch of Christians crowding together, like poor people, all in one house. Mike thinks that the rich have to have their own homes today, whether or not they even have home fellowships. Just rich people and big houses because all the rich young rulers in Mike Winger's church have been called to be wealthy. So if, if you were to sell all the homes, sell all the values, valuables in the early church, there would have been no local home fellowships. Where are they gathering? Some people are called to be business leaders and to be wealthy and honor God with wealth. And just like that, we slam the door shut on anything Jesus may have had to say on the subject. Rich young rulers who don't like what Jesus said, don't worry about it. You'll be welcomed with open arms in any church in the world today. And that is a good illustration of just how far away from the teachings of Jesus the church has fallen. It is happening all over the world, in churches of every persuasion, is it any wonder that Jesus lamented that he might not find any faith at all left when he returns? But if you are the exception, if you want to get back to the faith that Jesus taught, please contact me today. I look forward to hearing from you. God bless you.